Hello and welcome back friends. We're checking out a Saltery Bay Provincial Park and off to catch the ferry to the next part of the Sunshine Coast. Let's hit the road. So we were just hitting the road and gonna use the sandy dump on the way to the ferry and literally I'll bet you a million dollars you could not have guessed what just happened. Last year, when we were going across Canada, on the way back, I think it was just before Thunder Bay, I was using the toilet, I was using my phone while peeing, flushed the toilet, and my driver's license fell into the black tank. Because my driver's license was kept in like how my phone case has a little card spot. So, that sucked, I had to get it replaced. We even bought a nasty screen strainer and tried to strain out our tank. <laughs> Maybe we can throw up some funny footage of that or something if we still have it, but. This is not a situation you want to be in life right here. Well, that was super nasty and no luck, guys. Shucks. Down to driver's license and we still gotta get back to BC. We're in Thunder Bay right now. It was ridiculous and we just had assumed it was gone. I got a new license and I mean, this was literally a year ago at this point. I just pulled out our black tank hose and was about to use the sandy station. My driver's license turned up. I show you it, but it has all our details on it, of course, but it's not even in bad condition. Like, it's not faded. Like, I thought it was my new one. How does that, it must have been stuck inside the black tank hose. And then when I pulled it out and was shaking it out to get it ready to use, it fell out of there. But you would have thought it would have flushed out of the black tank a long time ago or been stuck in the bottom or it would have just washed through the hose into one of the tanks, but it was just laying on the grass beside it, and I was like, oh, that must be my most recent driver's license, and I guess I got two driver's license now. I'll be darned. <laughs> so we don't have a reservation for this ferry because we didn't really know like what time we'd be getting out and what day exactly, but we're lucky enough that they actually have the schedule posted here on the information board on the way out, so let's see what time we're catching the ferry. So, it looks like we're catching the 350 ferry. I guess we got some time to kill. So we just got back into service and I checked the ferry schedule just to make sure. And it looks like the one at the provincial park must have been outdated because it says we have 10 minutes to get there and ticket oh. sales stop in five minutes. Oh, and it looks like we're actually here. Oh, we made it! Yay! So there's a little bit of a lineup, so hopefully we still get on the ferry. Heck yeah! 1137. The ferry leaves at 11.45 and it looks like we're gonna make it. Look how full it is though, guys. So main test. Right on, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Yeah. We Oops. made it! That's awesome. Oh man, I'm so glad like waiting around till 3.40 <laughs> kind of would have sucked, but it wouldn't have been like the end of the world. We have things that we can do, but <laughs> we just barely made that ferry. Dang. That'd be a whole lot of juice. After the ferry, we had a plan to check out Klein Lake Recreation Site. It was only 10-15 minutes from the ferry spot, but I do not recommend you taking that road on your RV. It was one of the gnarlier roads we've done, and on top of that, it was a lot of like low-hanging branches we had to veer past, and it was all single lanes, so we had to squeeze over on that car's past. So, not too RV friendly, but there's so many little beautiful lakes we drove past out here, so we might camp in this pullout tonight even, but time will tell. Another nice thing over here though is I got to get the drone out again finally. Sorry for not having drone footage lately, but Campbell River down to Courtney for the ferry to the Sunshine Coast start only had a teeny little gap we could use it. All of Powell River and surrounding community was a no-fly airspace. 
and then we camped at a provincial park which is a no-fly zone so luckily on this side of the sunshine coast it looks like we can get the drone out a bit more hopefully at least so i'm looking forward to sharing that and getting that in just gives such a better perspective of all the area around you but we're gonna head down the road a bit farther here we're gonna go to a place called egmont small little town and it's got the skookum chuck rapids there so that is our next adventure and mission of the day here friends we're going on a hike kitty you're on rv garden duty you know the drill all right, so we're hiking down to the Skookumchuck Narrows. It's a really famous kind of like inlet, I think, where um, at like high tide and low tide, where the tide changes, like a whole bunch of water comes rushing in and then rushing back out. And it's really cool down there because I think we're timing it right so that we're gonna be able to see the standing wave. It's like a wave that never breaks and it's like super cool. But the hike should be an easy one, not too crazy like our trip <laughs> on the provincial park hike. If you missed that video, you gotta go back and find it because that the was struggle. a hike. It was a struggle, but holy cow, is it worth it? Those views were awesome. But anyways, let's head down here. I think it's about an hour hike, and let's go see the narrows. Yeah, phenomenal. We timed that perfectly. We're in the middle of a full moon cycle right now. We got here right at peak high tide. I'd, we'd been here once with my family before, but I think we were here at low tide. So seeing high tide, watching the kayakers. Yeah, I can't believe Dang. there's kayakers too. I had read about it online and I was like, what are the chances that there's going to be kayakers there? But that was crazy. They were so good. Yeah, Skookumchuck Rapids. You have to check it out if you're doing the Sunshine Coast. But sun's going down. I think we're going to head back to the RV here and go find our cabin spot for the night, friends. All right, good morning, guys. So this morning, we've actually got a bit of unexpected rainy weather. Well, I guess unexpected for us. We haven't had much for cell phone service in the past couple days, and we haven't been checking up on the weather, so we had no idea that it was gonna rain today. We actually had some like outdoorsy things planned and a couple of provincial parks along the ocean and stuff we we're gonna go check out but I think with being a rainy day it's probably a good day to just head to town head to Seychelles and get some chores done we really need to do some laundry so hopefully we can find a laundromat there and get some groceries and stuff like that kind of a bummer for the rain but honestly it's kind of nice having a rainy day to force us to go do the chores instead of just wanting to go have fun all the time. Last night on our hike um, down at the Skookum Tech Narrows, there's a beautiful pink sky and they say pink skies at night sailors delight and I guess they lied because not a very nice day today. So, quick and easy, and we are done in Seychelles already. Check out Pender Harbor with hopefully better weather, and then we'll come back here and explore it a little bit more, but this town is a lot smaller than I remember thinking it was gonna be. I thought there'd be a Walmart and like some other stuff we'd stock up on, but it is really tiny and really busy, honestly, for a kind of a weekday, middle of the afternoon time, so. Luckily, we did get laundry done at least at the one laundromat in town. We're now gonna go to a little lake because Alicia wants to bust out the kayak, 
and then I think we have a good boondocking site found as well. So we'll take you on the journey to see how this little Forest Service Road boondocking excursion goes as well. Man, we get here and it's a beautiful lake. It's huge. We found a great parking spot that we've seen when we drove past it on the way into Seychelles. Wouldn't you guess it? It started raining again. I hope we don't have bad weather for a few days coming up here. It might make it a little more difficult to get camping, but at least the spot is by our little forest service road we're gonna go check out. There should be a good spot to camp kind of up over yonder this lake here. And then maybe we'll get to use it tomorrow? Maybe? We'll see what the weather does for us at least, but dang. This is a really nice spot for a lake at least and a little pit stop if nothing else. So we crawled our way up this forest service road and we found a nice little spot to stay the night and would you look at that it's like clear skies and bright and sunny now for some reason like the weather cannot make its mind up today yeah pretty good spot though when we looked at the map the forest service road showed a lot of like actual big dirt lot pullouts up the forest service road but that must have been a few years old images since it updated this area because they're all grown in now but luckily this forest service road sometimes there's not many like vehicle pullouts but this one had pullout after pullout after pullout to let traffic pass so we figured if we're in a big one a there's enough spot for cars to pull in beside us and let someone pass as it is and then there's also a pullout just ahead of us and behind us so even if oh speaking of here comes somebody but it should be a pretty quiet forest service road it's a weekday night it's not like it's a weekend or a friday or anything where people will be active so this should be a good home for the day and we're in our clear cut which is a bonus because you get some sun but you also get a nice view Talk about awesome boondocking sites here, hey? The last two days in a row have just gone so smooth. I mean, with going to the rapids last night and being able to actually come back to a spot that's guaranteed gonna work out, just rolling at night and sleep. This forest service road's been super quiet and we caught a nice little bit of a golden hour here, even with the rain. This is some good RV living, I tell ya. Yeah, we've noticed that like the actual campgrounds and all the rec site stuff have been really, really busy lately. Packed. It's like, I don't know, prime camping season. It's in August now. And yeah. even on weekdays, like it's hard to get a spot at like a rec site or campsite, but we've been really lucky with these, these forest service roads and finding some of our own like boondocking spots. So definitely grateful for that. You can't beat just being out in nature here sometimes. Just completely quiet. You hear all the birds. There's no one running around, bikes scurching past you and everything. Loving it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of weird because we've gotten so like accustomed to coastal life now and we've been here for a while and like on the island and Sunshine yeah, Coast and stuff, but time. it's all coming to an end soon, which is crazy. Like I'm kind of excited to kind of get a new like change mm -hmm. of scenery again and go and venture and do some other stuff, but it's gonna be so sad leaving the coast here. Yeah, we've grown super attached to it and kind of fond of the coastal vibes, of course, but compared to last year across Canada, I mean, holy moly, every day it was like new towns, new capital cities, new sites, maritimes, prairies. There's all these just different vibes coming at you compared to just being kind of in a coastal atmosphere. So it's going to be neat to get back on the road and start doing some bigger driving again once we're done with the coast. Because with that being said, with our last week here, we're going to enjoy the Sunshine Coast. We have Gibson's coming up eventually, which is pretty famous. What was the show? Beachcombers. Beachcombers. <laughs> All the beachcombers lovers out there, my family included. So we'll be going to famous Gibson's. From there, there's a ferry to Horseshoe Bay. And then we're going to be taking off up to Lillooet, up through Whistler, up into the Lillooet Rugged Mountains, mm -hmm. then through all of kind of an upper BC area, and then eventually to Jasper National Park and driving all the way through kind of in between down to Banff and the Rockies. It's going to be a whole lot of mountains, a whole lot of more driving, and it's going to be quite a bit of a change of pace compared to kind of sea level coastal living. No more ferns. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, friends, that is going to conclude today's video. Hope you enjoyed the adventures and 
I hope Skookum Chuck was a nice highlight for you. I've heard of that at least. Man, those pictures and that golden hour lighting and actually having the kayakers there with the slow-mo footage, that looked beautiful. I was so happy with how that turned out and how good of an experience that was. So if you enjoyed all that, be sure to give the video a like. Subscribe if you're new. I know we've had a few of you new ones joining lately. We really appreciate having you all join the journey with us. And otherwise, we'll catch you in the next RV vlog adventure, friends. Have a good night and take care. See ya. Bye.